when you see one of these right here flying over your head, it's either inspecting power lines or it's looking for the bad guys. This one here is probably just looking for the bad guys. We're going to go on out to that footage and then we'll come back in and finish talking about what this drone means to you. So here you can see the thermal FLIR camera from the M2E Dual that it does not have MSX on. And I'm going to turn the MSX on and there you see the lines in the trees, the lines on the parking lot, and the lines in the road and around the buildings. It's a little better image where it's overlaying the, the color image with the FLIR. This is a parking lot view of an actual person standing in the parking lot at around 50 feet away. And you can clearly see that's a person walking around between those vehicles, the hot spots under the hoods and that kind of thing. You can see movement in the background. When I turn the MSX off in this image here, you can see that it's really kind of tough to distinguish the type of vehicle and the person. If that person was not moving, it would be really tough to distinguish that that's a person standing there unless the MSX is on. So it's a really good technology to add over top of this lower quality FLIR image. Now let's go into the screen and go into settings and look at our cold spot, our hot metal, gray, rainbow, and hot spot palettes. These palettes are preset from DJI. This is all that you get with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Unlike the XT where you get around 15 or 16 different color palettes in the thermal image, this only gives you five. You do, however, have settings inside of each one of those palettes to change the isotherm settings. So whenever you notice like the hot spots in this room, like when this person walks through here, you'll see the arms and the, the hands and those type of things are a little bit more temperature rated, so they go red. And then here, this is like a white hot, a traditional um, thermal image for nighttime. You know, you have gray, hot metal. Well, it depends on the application of what you're actually looking at and who you're searching for or what you're searching for with this thermal camera would depend on which one of these palettes would best suit you. And each individual has their own preference, but I personally like the rainbow because it allows me to see a person's body better in certain circumstances. If I was doing like a search and rescue or searching for fire. So going on through the settings, this is your isotherm here and you have search for people, search for fire and custom. And in the custom settings, you can change the low temperature readings and the high temperature readings. So that way you can adjust and eliminate false positives, you can eliminate hot spots and cold spots and that type of thing and search for a specific temperature in this isotherm and also the radiometric part of the camera. It also has a um, flat field correction which I have on auto right now so whenever I change any of these palettes the flat field correction it automatically updates in the drone so going through these palettes here, you'll notice that it gets darker, their arms are blue, and then the screen becomes blue, and then they become darker, and then some of the other color temperatures are highlighted. So in this custom setting here, now you can actually see the person is pretty much lit up red the entire part of their body. And if you notice how the color's changing in the background here, that's the flat field correction that's actually taking place as we're filming this. And then whenever that heat temperature comes back in, do you see how everything goes back to blue inside the screen? Um, here you have 4K at 30 frames per second in your visible light or your what they call RGB. And you've got the multiple palettes for the photo mode. You got 4, 3, 16, 9, JPEG, typical DJI settings in most all of the Mavics and the Phantoms. So um, let's just pause the video for one second and I'm actually gonna explain something to you guys right here. This is how the radiometric works in the drone. What happens is you actually click the little setting up there to the right of FFC, which stands for flat field correction, and then it brings up this box. And in this box right here, you'll notice that you can actually move the box around and you can drag it to make it larger or smaller. And the drone will actually search out the red dot will search out for the hottest temperature within that box so it eliminates everything else in the screen and just focuses what's on inside this box and it brings you the hottest temperature and the coldest temperature 
So in this particular in instance right here, I have an alarm set at 50 degrees Celsius. That's what the little bell on the left-hand part of that gray box is. And then it says max temperature 24.5 degrees Celsius and the minimum is 22 degrees Celsius. And then it shows an average of 22.4 over to the right. That is a really good feature. If you're doing a search and rescue or if you're looking for a hot spot, say like on a landfill or a stockpile of mulch or anything that could spontaneously combust due to heat, um, some factories, some warehouses, those type of things. If you're gonna use this MSX technology and this radiometric part of the drone, then you can actually use that right there to your advantage to show where that's your hot spot and then you'll have the alarm feature and if you do find something that's within that box that is over whatever you set it at if say 120 degrees or 125 degrees if those are your thresholds then that alarm will actually trigger off and it's very loud it comes through the screen on the crystal sky and it alarms you of where that actual hot spot is at plus you can visually have a reference and see it so let's go on and get back into the video here. And you'll notice how those little dots are jumping around. Now, this is the MSX part right here where you can adjust the line resolutions. And that I explained earlier, there's your color image. And so whenever you adjust those lines, it actually sets those to where they're matched up with the thermal image. And then again, this is without MSX on and then that's with MSX back on. Because I'm kind of playing around with it just to you know, show you guys the difference of you know, how it looks better with and without and the visible, what you're actually you know, referencing here, the hot spots and where those, those type of things are coming from. Now this is one of the guys that comes in and I'm gonna actually open up the screen and show you some of the features that you have in the preference settings and the flight control settings. These are all typical of DJI. Everybody's pretty much familiar with this. There is a few extra added features where this is an enterprise unit that some of you may not be aware of and you may not be familiar with, like the A-Pass and the time stamping and the GPS metadata, but this is all pretty much the same. And as we go through, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can turn on your sport modes and all that in here, just, you know, your return to home settings. Um, now what you're actually seeing right here is um, this is two individuals and I'm going to draw on the screen with my finger. So this camera, whenever you touch the screen, you can actually draw around it and move this camera in a pan tilt. So if you're looking at something and say you want to, instead of actually using the wheels, if you want to just look to the left or the right, that's where you can do that at. And that's a really cool feature. Um, I like it. it. It works really good. Say so if you want to look left or look right and just keep the drone flying straight, that's where that comes in handy. Um, again, here I'm back in the settings and I'm going to go through and show you guys like this is the home screen of the Crystal Sky right here where you have the DJI Pilot app and the Go4 app. And then obviously this is how it comes on when you first turn it on right here. And you can go through and set up all the different settings. Um, through your equipment and your me and all that. But um, yeah, every time you open up a pilot app in a crystal sky, this is what you see. So I hope you guys have a better understanding of how the MSX and the thermal works on this new Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. And we're gonna go back over to me sitting at a desk and wrapping it up. I'm not gonna say anything negative about it. I'm gonna let you guys decide based off the video and be your own judge as to whether or not this camera will suit your needs. I will say that it's probably not gonna work for me in power line inspection or cell phone tower inspection, although there may be some call for it under certain circumstances like a storm or if there's a broken line or something just to particularly be able to spot out like a place that has a broken line that the heat is not being transferred or if it's excessive heat. But the 640 by 512 resolution that you're gonna get on this X-T2 that I have right here behind me and this Z30, this is $30,000 sitting here behind me. This is $2,600. So that is obvious whenever you have those two different price points that you're gonna have two different types of drones. I have mount here 
with the crystal sky. And this is actually the larger crystal sky. So um, I wanna put the 5.5 on here. I think it would be a little more suitable for this little small controller and this Mav mount. So it's, uh, you know, the big one, but we, we use the big one for filming purposes today. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.